So before we get started today, I wanted to show you the new drop at 8 p.m. on the Steve Chief website, this new collection is coming out and I think everything looks insane, but I have better news for you. For 24 hours, you're going to be able to use my code SHADOW just like usual. However, it's going to be 15% off and the new code just for 24 hours is SHADOW15. So if you want to snatch up anything, get your amazing, amazing looking accessories, just make sure to use the code SHADOW15, get 15% off your order and make sure to browse the entire Steve Chief website I'm sure you'll find something that suits you and of course use my affiliate link that you'll find in the description box below That's going to take you to the website. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with the video Today I decided to talk about the top decks for the next format with the band list finally out We can start looking to the future European Championship is going to be played under the new list. Of course, the NAWCQ. There are three major nationals still to be played in Europe. That's France, Denmark, and also Germany. And everything is going to be with the new list. And that's pretty much what I felt like was going to happen. And it it did. They want the big events to be played with the new list. And they didn't care that much about the regular nationals. It's just what it is. But please let me know your thoughts about the best decks and I really really want to hear what you're going to be playing moving forward and your overall thoughts on the ban list as well. And of course don't forget to like the video, also sub and ding the bell so you are always notified when I post and also make sure to check out Patreon if you want to support the channel in any other ways. I will have more content on there soon just like I said in yesterday's video I will be working on some stuff to post on there and I will keep you notified when that happens. So for the first couple of things I wanted to talk about today, we're just very quickly going to touch upon Super Heavy Samurai, Pearly, and Methmec because I didn't include them in today's list and that's only because they suffered hits and we need to wait a bit to see what's going to happen to these decks because the hits did matter. It's not like they didn't and they didn't necessarily kill all of the decks, although Super Heavy Samurai could be <laughs> arguably dead. But we'll see what happens. So I'll just quickly go over these changes to the decks and then we'll actually discuss the top five decks. And let me know if there's anything you're cooking up with these three decks that you feel like will take them to the next meta with still at least some remnants of power. Because for the first deck I want to talk about today, which is Pearly, I think the deck isn't bad at all especially with the new support. It is going to take some time, but people did wait from Pearly release to now Pearly support, so I think they can wait a tiny bit longer for Duelist Nexus to really bring out some cards that are going to give more power to Pearly. The new cards are nice, you can go through the effects, read them for yourself here on the screen as well, but basically they get a new monster, they get a new trap card, and overall I think it is going to help the deck because Delicious hit hurt. It's literally one of the best, if not the best quick play spell card. Arguably Sleepy Memory is better, but Delicious Memory gets you to Plump, which helps you get into Noir. And right now getting to Delicious Memory is going to be much harder. And it was also very helpful with achieving OTKs. So right now, what is really going to be happening with Pearly? It might just turn to a hard going second deck to like an OTK machine. And with the support, it's going to be much easier. But right now it's kind of in a weird state, Please let me know what you're thinking about doing with the deck, if you're thinking about doing anything, because I think it's going to take a lot of serious testing and deck building and a lot of just good ideas to make it work on top of practicing a lot because impeccable gameplay is really important with this deck. And moving on to Super Heavy Samurai, which also suffered a hit, and it was a major one. The Scarecrow ban <laughs> was kind of wild. And both of these decks haven't really been out with the support for more than a couple of weeks. But I understand the preemptive hits 100% because they hit other decks as well. So they cannot risk, especially with the support in, in the case of Pearly, they cannot risk these decks becoming better and better and us again having this overpowered meta. So... As much as I understand, the Scarecrow hits still hurt. So what's going to happen to Super Heavy Samurai? They're going to become worse and they don't have as many one card combos anymore. They kind of became a two card combo deck. Like the one card combo is still fine, but it gets so easily disrupted with hand traps right now. And on top of them not getting to Baron immediately anymore so they can protect themselves. They also don't play Gamma anymore at three. So you cannot even be protected with the help of Gamma. So everything just kind of sucks all around. Like there are one card combos here. 
but it feels like if you are not a deck that's able to have a ton of one card combos and be kind of resilient to hand traps on top of playing a lot of engine you just have no space in the meta and in my opinion some other combo decks might just take the place of super heavy samurai we'll really see what happens please share your thoughts as well i've been looking at some combos people are doing stuff with everything pretty much you can go for the tilting entrainment you can go for just the regular bike combo which is much more important right now which then deviates to like a version with beyond the pendulum or you go into ballista as soon as possible to get to your other cards people are also doing combos with bestial lubellion like it's really really interesting and we'll see what happens and as for the last deck being math mech the circular hit to one i love <laughs> I'm being very biased, I don't care. And um, the thing with it is that you still get to circular. You have so many ways of getting to it, but right now you need to be playing all of these engines to get to circular. And also it is going to hurt you being hand trapped. It's just going to suck. It's not going to be as easy to play through hand traps anymore. And not to mention, Bishchios are going to become better, which will hinder meth mech if they become too popular. So it's going to be a bit weird, but you still have Firewall Defensor and all of these cards, so I don't think Mathmech is exactly dead, but it's definitely not in the spot that it was before. So with that, we can get to a deck that actually probably will still remain on top, exactly in the spot where it was before, and that's Kashira. Like, I love the Diablosis hit, because it means that now you can actually beat Kashira going second with your non-engine spell cards. You can easily with no sweat, just put in the Book of Eclipse and know it is going to be able to be activated because you won't get five zone locked, which is amazing. It also lost one unicorn, so consistency is down a tiny bit, but you still have two unicorn, you have the Fuse Spells, you have Fenrir, Teosis, and Birth is still untouched because for some reason they're like, you know, Birth is a cool card. It's not. And, um... Kashira will still be doing pretty much what it's been doing. It's keeping some of the decks in check because Shifter is also untouched. It can still play a ton of non-engine. The only thing with Shifter is like mirror matches, you know, it's not exactly useful. Sprite can also play it and it's going to be a strong deck. So that's a little something. But other than that, Kashira is just going to be a very annoying deck to deal with. It is going to be a menace in the meta. And I don't think they hit it enough. But the Arise Heart hit is not bad because once you get rid of it, it's gone, which is great. And um, I don't know, I mean, in my opinion, Arise Heart is still an issue, but the deck is still here to stay for at least some time. And Branded is another deck that's been around for quite a minute. And the deck is still the same, but with the Expulsion hit, it lost its easy way of getting to the Gimmick Puppet Lock. But you still have Albion the Incandescent Dragon, so it's not that bad. It also can be targeted, so it's a bit harder to interact with, but it does require you to really put everything into it if you want to go for the lock. It's not as easy, you know, just going for expulsion in the end phase because you can do it and you also have like a million ways of sending gimmick puppet to the graveyard. So things will change just a tiny bit, but still I think Branded will remain at the top. But the issue with it is that the second it becomes too good, too popular, people are going to be prepared for it much more. Right now Ash wasn't that impactful and people were siding for other matchups as well, so a lot of times Brandic could slip under the radar, which is not going to be the case anymore. The next deck we're going to be discussing is Sprite, and Sprite, especially with Evil Twin and Runic, is going to be much better. Runic was kind of falling off because it can't fit as much non-engine, but number one, it wasn't hit. Fountain to two. Who thinks of this? And we also won't be playing that many henchups anymore to combat Super Heavy Samurai. Another thing, Starter did get hit to two. Again, one of the preemptive hits to just do a slight tap on the wrist to some decks. Otherwise, they would become too good again, which they really don't want. So Starter to two, I think we just need to take what we can get. And even though the consistency is going to suffer a bit, I still think that Sprite has a lot to offer in the next format. Not to mention that Melfi Sprite is still a thing and the deck overall is quite budget. So if you want to get a deck on a budget that isn't that hard to learn but rewards good gameplay, I think Sprite would be for you. However, if you're more of a trap deck player, you can turn to Labyrinth, which has been popping up a lot. At Nationals, it managed to win, I think, at least two. And the versions are actually different. There's the furniture build, there's just a regular trap build, but overall, just Labyrinth has been evolving. They started playing Wannabe, an interesting tech card. And I think we need to respect trap decks. Lightning Storm went to two, so they might become even better. The only issue with them is that the second they become 
I guess, too too much of a threat, they will get respected to the point where they might fall off if you have enough things to combat them. But I still feel that Labran has enough sheer power to just continue to have a spot in the meta. It has amazing grind game and it's able to just completely annihilate you, take away your resources and just continue going to the point where you just can't keep up. Another great addition to the deck is Chaos Angel, which on top of being a good card, it's also a fiend. So it plays around the fiend lock, which is amazing. Then moving on to another thing that's really, really important to mention and a lot of people are going to be pissed about it. Skill Drain is still at three and the deck did utilize it and it's still going to continue to do it. So it's just something you're going to have to deal with. And again, I'm going to emphasize, I think you need to respect Labyrinth and just respect trap decks overall. For the last place, I actually wanted to just throw a couple honorable mentions out there and you can help me decide which of these decks has to take the last spot on this list because there's a, a lot of them actually. You have dragons, there are also monodium, and we're going to be discussing Rika. So dragons are kind of, they're really interesting because they keep flying under the radar and, and just doing well here and there, but the issue is that they weren't as represented because people turned to other decks and Bishios didn't have that much impact on the meta. However, format is going to shift, meta is going to shift, and dragons are just a really nice combo deck that's able to also play a bit of a slower game controlling everything with the Bishios. It's interesting and it can evolve a ton of different ways. The spot that is an amazing, amazing addition. And also depending on how the meta shifts, Bishios might also become more popular. They might even get popular to the point where you just want to play them to stop decks like Drytron, Methmag that might still have a place in the meta. So whatever happens, you can get dragons if you want, and I think you can play them and catch a lot of people off guard. And another deck I mentioned is Monadium, and it's really, really interesting that Monadium was basically like a worse version of Super Heavy Samurai, and I think, at least in my opinion, it is going to surpass Super Heavy Samurai. It did pretty much the same thing, but the issue was that Super Heavy Samurai had one card combos and a smaller engine, whereas Monodium had to fit a ton more engine in. And the very weird, annoying part was that if you wanted to be protected, go for Baron, you kind of just ran out of resources. It felt like a very glass cannon type of deck and just you got stopped and then you didn't have that much to do where you could easily rely on your board to win the game. It was just weird, to put it mildly. But now with Super Heavy Samurai gone, it might establish itself to be the go-to combo deck. And it's also receiving support, which is great. And the last deck I wanted to talk about is Rika, and it actually managed to go 10-0 at UK Nationals yesterday, and today it actually got to top 4. Rika is again one of these decks that people just don't I don't know, they don't respect enough or they don't prepare for it enough and overall it's just really powerful in its own and all of this combined makes it into a formidable deck that I think you need to keep in mind and I think you need to be prepared for. It has a ton of combos, enough space for non-engines, so it's ending on boards on top of having hand chips in the hand and realistically you're probably not beating a Rika board. It's just what it is, a ton of different disruptions and it rewards really good technical plays. So if you're going up against someone that's been playing Rika for some time, I don't think you're gonna have a good time. So you need to think about this deck, maybe even get it because it is going to be a good contender and probably should be respected. So that's going to round off our list. Please let me know, like I said before, which of these ones you feel like should take up the top five spots or even more. Just let me know your thoughts. I always love reading you guys' responses. And if you like the video, please make sure to like it. It really does help. And yeah, go on Sleeve Chief, check out their job. Don't forget to use my code for 24 hours. Like I said before, you get 15% off with code SHADOW15. So that's amazing. Go snatch your accessories, get your last minute pickups for nationals, and let me know if you're excited about the new and hopefully improved format. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.